All right, so Americana Armlock, lesson two. The third element here is how to take an Americana from an extremely secure mounted position. Many times, especially this is effective if the guy's bigger and stronger and we're working very hard to maintain the mount. Sometimes just this alone, the hands wide and low and the feet in and together and the knees barely touching and driving the pressure of the hips, right? That's not quite enough. If the person really starts to thrash about, I may have to find myself basing here because they push me to the side. And when I do, hopefully I'll be able to wrap the head also, right? So I may have to do this back and forth, back and forth, right? And we'll look at that in a later lesson when we talk about positional control from mount. How do we maintain the mount? What different effective movements? We've seen these before. But right now we're going to add this element into the Americana. So we're going to imagine that we have a particularly aggressive opponent from the mount and he's thrown us so much to the side that we have to perhaps wrap the head to hold on. Right? So that means that the back hook is in and the front knee is open because we catch ourselves from falling from the mount and the hands up wide for base. Right? And now once we see that we have a little bit of security here and we're stable, we can grab the wrist right, and push it to the ground and we do that with the thumb because we're pushing and pulling here, right? We're controlling the element of the arm's movement. We're not just locking something down, which is what we use the thumbless grip for so that they can't escape. Here, we're the one initiating the movement. So we find the wrist and we push it to the ground and then we feed it to our hand behind the head. And at this point too, you can still use the thumbless grip. It's okay to keep the thumbless grip here because sometimes the hand's gonna be a little mobile. The extra security you have behind the head is gonna make it extra hard for him to move his arm. So whereas from this position, if I hold the, thumbless, the, the thumb full grip, the C grip, he can straighten the arm pretty easily and break through the weak part of the thumb. From this position, because I'm already around the head and I fed the arm here, he's gonna have a little harder time because the head helps to stabilize my grip, right? So from this position, everything is the same Except you see that if I come underneath the arm here and try to execute the Americana, his head blocks my rotation. Right? What I need is for the hand to slide south, for the elbow to slide south, for the hand to paint the mat, right, like this. That's what creates the tension, and then the torque is created here, and those two things together are what dislocate the joint, what, what ruin the joint. So once I'm holding the head and I feed the hand here, and I can use a C grip in the meantime, and I come under the arm and hold my own wrist, I need to take the head out of the way. Very, very simple way to do that. It's just what you think it might be. I loop around the head and put my elbow back down to the original position. And when I do, I switch to my thumbless grip. Very simple. Now, of course, my back hook would already be in. My front knee would already be open because that happens when I put the hand underneath, right? I'm already in the mounted position, wide and low, he thrashes, I catch, and my hand's out for base. Already, I probably have this back hook in and my front knee open for a little stabilization. If I need to put my knees back down so that I can feed myself the wrist, that's fine. That's fine. And when I go to put the hand back underneath, when I put the hand back underneath, just like in the standard variation, that's when I insert the hook right here. And I hold my own wrist. And now to finish the lock, I loop around the head, remove my thumbs from the grip, so I go back to a full monkey grip. Front knee's open, back hook is in, everything's the same. Head down, paint brush with the back of the hand, drag the hand south, and lift the elbow. And that's it. All right, so the whole scenario, we've tried to set something up, but he's been a little aggressive from the mount, so I find myself having to catch my base, and even this is not enough, the pressure with the hips is not enough, I find that he's going to bench press me to one side, so I have to catch the head and put my hand low and wide for base. Once I'm here, though, I see that perhaps the hand becomes available. This happens a lot because he's going to grab what's closest, so fine, I'm going to grab that too and put it to the ground and feed it to my wrist behind the head, and the head helps me hold that grip. 
Now when I come underneath, palm up, that's when my back hook goes in. And remember, it doesn't go low around the ankle. Because if it does, he can straighten the leg and put the leg back in the middle, and now my hook is gone, my stability is gone. So when I put the hand underneath and the back hook goes in, my foot goes to the sky, and the front knee opens. Toes pointed up, foot pointed up. Once I have my wrist, I loop around the head. And now I remove my thumbs, right? Back to this covered grip, because I'm in my original position. Head down, looking away, back hook in, front knee open. Paint, brush the hand, drag the hand, lift the elbow. There we go. All right, so we're like this. One more. Okay, guys, make sense? Mm -hmm. Try it out. <laughs>